Hello viewers, SuperGT here. So very recently I made a video about one of the reasons why I love playing Gran Turismo. But there are days, there are times when I really don't like playing this game. Where everything seems to conspire against you and everything goes epically wrong. And unfortunately this was one of those days. So we're going to go through a couple of races here at Red Bull Ring. Now in the previous video about why I love the game, it's really a case of things being very close, the racing being very very close indeed, and uh, it's not always like that, but sometimes, uh, quite often in the FIA races especially, you get grids where, you know, from first to last it's not split by very much at all, and this was another example of that actually, so I was very pleased with how close the race was, even if my qualifying wasn't great, so in the Jaguar there, see three quarters of a second from pole, and that put me 17th. So even if I had gone like two, two temps quicker, I would have been in the top 10. Just shows you how close it is. So unfortunately on this occasion, uh, just not really getting the, the lap completed together. But uh, we go from 17th and we'll see what we can do from near enough the back of the pack. So this race, I did, uh, I did two practice runs. Now you, you have choice of the soft tyre, the medium tyre and I'm going for the medium because we're going to go for the no stop strategy and I'm presuming that some people in here, as I almost spin out of turn one, I'm presuming that some people in here will be going for the one stop, so uh, soft tyres then come in and get another set of soft tyres. So there's going to be a mix of strategy in the race, going for the medium, so I'm going to have a sort of a slow and steady race. I've just got to really preserve those tyres. The problem with the Group 4 Jaguar is very quick in a straight line, which can help around this track. Uh, but the problem is, as we go for the move on the Toyota, you see the top end speed there with the slipstream. Quite easily go past the Toyota, which isn't the best in a straight line. But the problem with the Group 4 Toyota, uh, the, sorry, the Group 4 Jaguar is the tyre wear on the front. The the balance between the, uh, the tyre wear front to back is not very good in favour of the front, so it's actually really bad on the front. So you really lose all that front end feeling as the, as the race goes on. But that's something we have to kind of deal with and try to manoeuvre around. So gaining one position on this first lap, you see just up ahead just how close it is. And just like that Fuji race that I showed last week, which kind of highlighted how close the game can be, this was another example of that. as. Um, for as, as, as we saw there in qualifying uh, three quarters of a second from first to 17th which is very very close indeed very very close so that's going to kind of uh, make its way for a, a very close race especially in the midfield as you see here as we go up into the hairpin see just how close it is three abreast between the guys up ahead and we're up into the slipstream of the Atenza now I'm going to pull over to the left hand side and the power of the Jaguar is very good there's one strength that I'd really pick out from this car is its straight line speed. As we have someone just coming out of the slipstream there, or sorry, out of the ghosting, and uh, we're going to go around the outside of the Atenza and just claim 15th. So, so far, slow and steady start, just gaining one position on each lap so far, and just looking at the pack ahead, just how close it is as uh, we all come through into the final sector the split line is there as we come into the final sector then of the circuit and uh, yeah it's pretty much a train here from about I think it's about 7th all the way back to 15th here only 7 seconds away from the lead at this point so the entire pack is split by around about 10 seconds so it's very very close indeed it's gone into the final turn a little bit of understeer there had to turn in a little bit earlier got the brake bias all the way to the back to try to minimise the front tyre wear but it's really um, it's still really bad even with that you can't completely get rid of it coming up the hill then into turn 2 again 3 abreast look how close it is got the Porsche 2 Toyotas they get edged out wide 1 Toyota going flailing back across to the right hand side I'm going to tuck into the slipstream and go past the pair of them so up into 13th another 2 positions gained as we come into the next turn just covering off the Toyota from behind I think the Lamborghini very early in the brakes leaves the space open and I'm going to take the invitation to go up the inside and I've actually, I think there's a tiny touch, a tiny tiny touch and he's gone wide onto the gravel 
up into 12th and again just looking at that group ahead one two three four five cars then a little back a uh, little bit of a gap to the Porsche just in front so it's a very very close fight indeed so uh, as long as we can try to get onto that slipstream off the car ahead then we should be good as um, coming to this final sector then this is where you really have to make a count so you get the slipstream down the main straight and then the next two straight so lots of straights here is actually I've noticed this in a previous video a recent video that this track actually really does lend itself to very close racing actually because of the slipstream because there are three straights you have this long straight here then after turn one into turn two and then after turn two into turn three so three consecutive quite long straights uh, where you can really slipstream the car ahead and uh, it does promote closer racing in that sense it's just drifting a little bit wide you see there the, the front end just beginning to not want to work with me as we go through turn one and just holding off the Toyota you see that is the really uh, big advantage of the Jaguar again straight line speed just managed to hold off a car which got a better exit from the, the preceding corner just managed to keep the position so into the slipstream now of the guys uh, ahead so we've got the BMW the Porsche can we back, uh, go back gaining another position we've gained five so far so the race has, has gone quite well and in fact we have actually gained on the lead overall so now 6.6 .6 seconds behind the lead 6.7 and so it just shows you that uh, it is a very close race indeed maybe uh, the guys up there at the front are just conserving their tyres a little bit better so up the inside of the Porsche and then looking for the inside of the BMW and go side by side on the exit here into the next turn and as we go through the turn I'm just going to receive a tiny touch tiny tiny touch but it's enough to send me into the gravel which is honestly so frustrating and you got a 5 second penalty for that as a go down to 16 so all that hard work that we've just put in has just been completely undone by one tiny touch it was honestly a tiniest of touches and in the same way as the guy behind me in the Lamborghini who's now my right hand side you know the tiny touch that we had I think it was on the turn 3 hairpin that put him down a couple of positions so it is very frustrating in these very close races when the one tiny incident um, even if you lose two seconds which doesn't sound much, like, but it really is when the group is this close together you can lose five six positions even if you have a tiny accident or one little penalty it just shows you and again uh, well not again but for the first time in this race we get a 0.5 for slightly extending the exit of turn one so it is a big deterrent now you really do have to be very careful in the exit of turn one as of course you will get those penalties as a tilster going flying off into the barrier so we're going to just serve that penalty there lose a bit of momentum but we gain actually a position or two it's going to be going slow so back into 14th so I suppose it could be worse so 0.5 isn't too bad it just drops you off outside that slipstream range normally so down in 14th the, the pack is beginning to thin out now as we come round towards the end of lap number 5 a couple of guys are going to go into the pit lane here so as we mentioned earlier some people going for the, the one stop and uh, most of us here staying out to go for the no stop strategy so lots of people going in for the soft tyre they will be strong at the end but when I did the testing, I did, so as I say, I did two runs, one on the medium tyre with no stop, one on the soft tyre with one stop, and my medium run was about five seconds quicker overall in terms of the whole race. So that's something definitely to consider as uh, we go through the final turn side by side with Zimmy. And, but yeah, I mean, the overall race time, it does matter of course but then the difficulty um, or the difference I think when you do a practice race or when I did my practice race I was on my own so it's a lot easier to be consistent and smooth when you don't have to worry about fighting anyone but as soon as you've got to start fighting people it becomes a lot more difficult so that is um, a big difference between the practice and the actual race so Zimmy there getting a penalty up to 7th now so that was the end of lap 6 onto the beginning of 7 as a couple more people go into the pit lane so some people splitting their uh, their stop between lap 5 and lap 6 so now up into 7 it's a good position um, Evo List is 3 seconds ahead and he actually started behind me so he's he's managed to get the jump and gain quite a lot of time it just shows you how just avoiding all the trouble avoiding the penalties avoiding any incidents can really help and 3 seconds is a lot of time 
the amount of effort I have to put in just to gain that three seconds is probably just not going to happen on pure pace. It's going to happen only if he gets a penalty or if he's involved in something. And unfortunately, it's going to be me who's involved in something. As just uh, looking at the map, there is quite a horde of cars behind who are looking to come back through. And we've still got three laps left to go after this one. It could be a very long last couple of laps here. As you can see through the hairpin, just really not getting grips, excuse the pun, at all with the corner. So BSR Steve going through, he was one of the first people to go for the one stop strategy. So he's gonna, he's, he's basically got three and a half laps here to just really fight through the pack as we get overtaken by the Lamborghini. You see the difference between, I'm on old medium tyres and these guys are on new fresh softs. So they've just got all the advantage in the world. I'm not gonna fight this guy, there's just no point. He's gonna come through quite easily and I get done again by an Audi. So just absolutely slipping down the order here and there's not much I can do about it. So it's kind of an unfortunate race here. So I think with, without a couple of little incidents, it really could have been quite a lot better by this point, but it just shows you, um, it, you, you have to learn from these races because it just shows you that the, the tiny incidents that you can get really does matter a lot in, in a race as close as this one. And I, I've noticed since, since getting to about 60,000 driver rating, which I am now. Um, I'm normally in second split racing, second or third, often second. So th the racing is a lot, uh, lot faster, a lot closer. Uh, the, the margins are much more fine, and um, any mistakes you make just really costs you so much more. So you have to be really, really refined in this uh, level of racing here. I like it though. I like the challenge. Um, in here. <laughs> Oh my god, I had to bail out completely. So this race has just really gone away from me. Down into uh, 16, uh, down into 17 actually. Although ZKP here with the penalty. So courtesy of that, I'll go back into not last. So it's basically a battle now just to not finish in last position. And we are really on the edge of, the fine edge of grip on that front left tyre. As um, this track is clockwise circuit they're going to be turning right a lot more the front left is going to be the one that suffers get overtaken by the Lamborghini but he's just going to drift slightly wide on the exit have to get the brakes on to stop himself going to the gravel so again it's the battle to not finish in last and our front left has gone completely 100% red so we've actually got pretty much minus grip on that tyre so not good news at all I mean, the, the, the more bad news is really that the race really just didn't go very well. It's unfortunate because in the practice races it went quite well, but here in the actual thing, not at all. So there we go, a really disappointing race. And it's a couple of little incidents. It just shows you when, when you have these incidents, it can mess you right up. Quite rightly, the guy looking on there for, in a forlorn manner. Fastest driver for Jaguar, apparently. Only probably because I was the only driver for Jaguar in the race. Now this, now I mean that race was fairly annoying because of my own mistakes, because of the one hit from behind made me go wide. But this is this is what was really annoying me because okay, you know you have a bad race, you've got an hour or so to wait until the next one. So you know you put in another practice session or whatever, I'm gonna go for another qualifying lap here. So I've done plenty of fuel saving, or so fuel burning again. Uh, murdering as many polar bears and ice caps as possible to burn as much fuel as I can and then here we go this is our actual flying lap here so this this lap was actually going really well at this point because um, you see there as I get hooked up with the apex it's actually nice to have grip again the sensation of grip is actually very nice my fastest lap at this point here is a 2 minute 38 as I was going around with the brake pedal on and uh, burning fuel so this is actually my first flying lap so coming through here, we're going to get the second split. 106.5. On my previous uh, run on the first race, it was a 206.7. Uh, so I'm two tenths quicker at this point. And I know that I messed up the final turn on my previous run, so I can go even quicker. So I could potentially be quite a lot higher up on the grid, as you saw how close it was in the previous race. Uh, one or two tenths can gain you a lot of positions. But coming into the final turn, the pole sitter just decides to just park it on the apex like an absolute idiot. And it just completely ruined my lap, completely ruined it. And um, in retaliation, I, I was so annoyed, uh, so annoyed I just punted him off. So he just, well, obviously he's given up on his lap because he got a penalty, but he just 
I don't know, just not aware. I, I, I mean, he's probably just made an innocent mistake, but it was still really frustrating to, to have your lap ruined because it could have been a good one. And it could have been even as high as maybe a 35, 5, 35, 6. I could have been in the top 10. So it's very, very frustrating to have that. And anyway, I mean, the race disconnected, so I didn't get a chance to, to race anyway. But um, there we go. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys, as much as I didn't enjoy recording it. But that's it. I mean, sometimes, you know, you have these bad days. And I think sometimes it's a good idea to highlight the struggle of your Gran Turismo player. Sometimes it isn't always easy. But there we go. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your struggles you've had in the game. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.